So we saw that actually if you sample something, right, if you need to sample it, we need to maintain Nyquist rate. And Nyquist means that basically you need to sample it at least at twice the rate of it, it, at highest bandwidth, highest signal energy that there is, uh, highest frequency at which you have energy at. And that was the Nyquist rate and we derived it. Now, but there are these things called, for example, sampling oscilloscopes. And one of those things, one of the things they do, so they do something like this. So let's say you have a periodic waveform. So let's say you have some waveform you're trying to sample. So let's say this is your periodic waveform. And this is a pretty high frequency signal. So a typical oscilloscope cannot measure this. Let's say it's a 50 gigahertz signal, 30 gigahertz signal. So what you can do instead is that you can say, wait a second. I'm trying to reconstruct this shape, right? What if I sample it once here and wait, 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 because I can't sample very quickly, but the next time I sample it, I start from that same point, but plus here. So I basically sample here and then wait, 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 wait. And the next time I sample a little bit farther out, farther out, farther out, but not here, farther down the road. So I go down or let's, let's say I do it every period for the sake of argument, to make it simple. So I sample here, and then if this is the period, I wait a period plus some delta t and sample here, and then I wait a period plus two delta t, two deltas, and I sample here, and I keep sampling it at intervals plus a little bit of a delta. So if I have the period, and I measure sample it at a period, or n periods for that matter. So I sample it here, I wait 100 periods, and I sample it at 100 periods plus a delta. And I wait another 100 period, and I sample it at 100 periods plus two, or 200 period plus two delta. Do you agree that I can reconstruct the signal? Because I get samples of it at the right times, and I can put them together. So I put the first sample here, and I wait a little bit longer, put the next sample here, next sample is here, next sample is here, next sample is here, and this here, so on and so forth. And I can make this, these samples and attach them and reconstruct this waveform pretty accurately. But I'm sampling at a much lower rate than Nyquist, right? Because I'm not even sampling once a period. I'm sampling once every 100 period. So what happened? Did we break the Nyquist limit? I'm exploiting, exploiting periodicity, right? I'm exploiting the fact that this is a periodic waveform. Why is that important? Because if I have a periodic waveform, my Fourier transform is not filled. It's sparse, right? Because for a periodic waveform like this, my Fourier transform, my spectrum, will look like this. It has some Fourier comp components like that. Well, let's put them a little bit. Um, So my Fourier components are like this, right? And what happens is that I am, when we are sampling at a rate that's much smaller, equivalent Fourier trans, Fourier domain, a spectrum, so this is the sampling, this is Shaw F of F, F naught of F, it's pretty dense. And remember, for this to work, it can't be an integer multiple of the period. It has to be off. So what happens is that when you do this, you're taking these things and you're shifting them down, so you're assembling them very, very close to each other. So these components that you're looking for will assemble here, there, 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 there. So these, this will come here, this will come here, this will come here, this will come here, so on and so forth. And because they're real deltas, they're not going to interfere with each other as long as there's no integer multiple relationship between them, right? If you make them prime with respect to each other, if you make them co-prime, then they will not overlap. So you, the, your information is not lost when you do this. So Ny that's why Nyquist rate talks about the bandwidth of the signal, not its maximum frequency, really. Another way, another way that this exhibits itself is in subsampling signals. So now you may say, okay, well, fine. So that was because it was periodic. Now, how about this? If I give you something that has a spectrum 
that, let's like, like that modulated signal that we talked about, right? If you think about the modulation signal. So let's say I have something that has a spectrum that is modulated around some F1, and it has a bandwidth of, so this is the bandwidth of B and B on each side. Something like that, right? What happens if I want to sample this? Do I have to sample it at twice the F1 plus B? If I do that, what would happen is that then this, this whole thing will get replicated multiple times without overlap. But do I really need to do that if I have nothing else? If everything is clean, if, there's, if that's the only thing I'm looking at? Do we need to, to reconstruct the signal? Do I need to really sample it at that high rate? Let's say this is a modulated signal at, I don't know, 100 megahertz, at 1 gigahertz, right? But the bandwidth of the signal you're dealing with is, let's say, I don't know, 10 kilohertz. Do we really need to modulate? Do we really need to sample at that high rate? Yes, of course. If you sample at Nyquist, then you can take this and replicate it n times, and they will not inter interfere. But what if we pick a sampling frequency that is something like this? Fs. So then I'm basically modulating, well, let's say a little bit farther away. Something like that. What would happen? I'm convolving this with that, right? So when I'm convolving it with this, I will get multiple copies of this thing. So for DC, I get this guy and this guy. And then it gets shifted up, so I get this repeated here and here. I picked a difficult shape to do quickly. But anyway, it doesn't matter. And so on and so forth. And then you go the other direction. So you go in this direction and in this direction. And if you pick this frequency correctly, you can actually pick it up so that they will not overlap, right? So you can actually sample it at a rate much lower than the carrier frequency. But the constraint still applies to the bandwidth. You can't exceed the rate associated, determined by the bandwidth of the signal. Because then they will start overlapping and aliasing. And this is called the subsampling receiver. You can make a receiver that's subsampling the signal at the rate that's much lower, but you can recover the signal. For example, and the way to think about it even in time domain is that think about a modulated signal. So let's say this, this envelope is some sort of a signal you're trying to recover, some audio, right? The trick is that really this signal, the bandwidth of this, this is not moving as fast. It has much smaller bandwidth. You're not really trying to reconstruct this carrier. That doesn't contain any information. If you wanted to reconstruct this carrier, then you have to sample it really fast, at twice the rate of the carrier, at least, right? To be able to reconstruct it. But you really don't need to. If I sample it a little bit here, and 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 from the signal that I can sample, I can reconstruct that envelope which is what is in this part of the signal. But I don't need to really reconstruct the carrier. So that's the basis for subsampling. OK? All right. Uh, any questions? No? All right. 